Global businesses may have a case to answer in yet another unfolding legal battle effect in Africa. Five U.S. tech giants, including Apple, Microsoft and Google parent Alphabet, have been named in a lawsuit over the death of child laborers in cobalt mines in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now impoverished but mineral-rich DR Congo is the world's largest producer of the rare metal, which is crucial for making batteries used in mobile phones and electric vehicles. The case was launched Sunday in the name of 14 unidentified victims who are members of the families of children killed in tunnel collapses. According to reports, child miners work for 2 to uh, $3 a day under Stone Age conditions for poultry wages and at immense uh, personal risk, BMW and Samsung announced a joint project to ensure responsible cobalt mining in the uh, Congo earlier this year. The mining industry has said it wants to adopt the standards of good governance to improve working conditions. And from all this, uh, CEO Alpha African Advisory Soyade Okoli joins me in the studio. Good morning, Soyade. It's good to have you with us. Thank you, Good morning. All right, so we start off with the mining Congo uh, debacle. So the accused are powerful tech companies, as mm. you've heard, Google and others. Uh, so will victims in the R Congo get legal reprieve, you think, at this rate? Ah, uh, well... <laughs> It's difficult to say. Obviously, they've launched the, the lawsuit, mm. and I think it will, it, things will have to play out. Mm. Actually, this is one story I wish I was sitting mm. next to a legal uh, <laughs> expert, because it would have been yeah. good to get the legal perspective. Yeah. But um, as you're aware, the mines that are affected um, are mines um, under the control of Glencore and mm. another um, Chinese Chinese company. Yeah. So what they are trying to do is to link these um, tech firms and mm. also Tesla yeah. to essentially be able, they need to be able to demonstrate some mm. level of culpability, yeah. some level of negligence on their part, mm -hmm. etc. What they have said is that these companies were aware of the issue, they were aware that child labor mm. was being used and they didn't do anything about that. So they've got to essentially prove mm. and link their actions mm. to the, the death and the injuries of these children. Mm. That's, it's going to be um, very interesting, shall we interesting say. Interesting indeed, and I think it has a far-reaching implication to other regions you know, who are involved in mining, as it were, and using underage children to do this. So, you know, it's not about the Congo alone. We've always uh, have issues like this uh, for some time now. So. Sorry, okay. just okay. on okay. that, you, you know, I, I was going to say, yeah. as well. no, I think what this does, mm. even, you know, should they not win their case, mm. what it has done, though, is to, brought the, um, is to bring the issue of child labour to the front burner. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's going to raise awareness mm. of the child labour issues and mm. the conditions under which they're working, etc. Yeah. Something similar to blood diamonds um, and how that became an, mm. an issue. I, I suspect that this case will, mm. will push also, um, the matter forward. Indeed. So will this case in any way affect global pricing for cobalt with Congo supplying 60% at this rate? Well, as you can imagine, um, after the announcement of the case, there has been um, a slight price mm. increase. But, you know, if I step back, um, I think one of the things that will definitely affect the price mm. is that if, and it will be, you know, child mm. labor becomes an issue and yeah. these companies are forced to use, you know, working age mm. people, then that has cost implications. Yeah. And those cost implications will eventually have to filter in into mm. the, the pricing. Because yeah. at the end of the day, the reason they are using the children mm. is because they're much cheaper and yes. easier to control. Mm. That, but you can't help but think that's more like a slave labor here. Oh, indeed. Especially in the it modern is. era, and you'd expect uh, uh, better things to be done indeed. in that respect. And, and it, it'll be interesting to know what sort of politics, because in that report we heard something about uh, them trying to improve the conditions. But when you talk about improvement, what kind of uh, improvement will that be? You well, know, they're still working in those horrid conditions, as it were. And, you know, reading some of the stories of the individual children, you know, yeah. some started as young as the age of six. Mm -hmm. You know, talking about children being, you know, human mules and stuff like That's that. That's even denying their childhood at six. <laughs> well, you know, forget about education, etc. Yeah. And, you know, we're talking about um, DRC, where, um, you know, GDP is mm. roughly about $50 billion um, dollars and GDP per capita. You know, put it, to put it in context, GDP per capita is roughly about um, $500, which is about a quarter yeah. of what we have here in Nigeria. So that gives you a sense of the, the level of poverty mm. in, the, in the country. And it's also 
only about um, population is about 85, 86 mm. million, mm -hmm. but vast tracts of land. Yeah. And you have the urbanization rate of roughly about 40%. So there's so many other issues mm -hmm. they're grappling with. You know, obviously, we know about the political um, position, etc. Mm -hmm. So interesting is, mm. is, is, is a word. Indeed, a gambit of uh, interesting issues there. So let's talk about uh, perception now, especially from the consumer perspective, the mm. mobile phone and electric car industries now. Mm. Will people take a different view on production and purchase prospects at this rate? We can talk about, okay, fine. In, in, uh, currently, uh, there's uh, the leading uh, advocates for cleaner energy, as it were, and uh, we're seeing this scenario. So will that change people's perception? Oh, an electric car, I'm going to buy this, and this is what goes into making that car. So at this rate? As I said, it mm. definitely brings the whole issue. to the products yeah. that you yeah. and I use, you know. Electric cars may seem somewhat far removed, mm -hmm. but the mobile phone usage we globally... We use it every day. Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> it's like, how far do we go? You know, to mm -hmm. what extent are we all culpable? So, mm -hmm. certainly speaking for myself, mm -hmm. awareness mm -hmm. has, been, has been raised. Um, and I think what we'll, you also find is that the, these, the affected companies, the Apples, Dells, yeah. et cetera, they will be forced to make changes. Mm -hmm. They can no longer say mm -hmm. they do not know. It is mm -hmm. now very much in the public, mm -hmm. public um, eye. So, yes, I expect more changes from the corporate standpoint mm -hmm. in the, the immediate um, term based on consumer pressure. Yeah, just to add to that, uh, just yesterday, Goldman Sachs was saying it doesn't want to invest in uh, uh, industries where pollution is at its uh, height mm. and uh, mm. probably the message is getting to them mm. but it's one thing to say this you know you have to match your words with action mm. yeah. uh, regarding this uh, you know environmental issues as it were all right uh, let's move on to other issues where we hear the international monetary fund says it has agreed a uh, 368.4 million dollars credit facility for strive to uh, democratic republic of congo to enable its authorities to meet their urgent a balance of payment needs I have said in a statement that the economic environment remains challenging and vulnerable to shocks. Now, real GDP growth is projected to decelerate to 4.5% in 2019 from 5.8% in 2018. And international reserves have fallen to critically low levels in the country. President Felix Tshisekedi, who took office in January this year, has vowed to enact sweeping reform and root out corruption in the poor but uh, mineral-rich Central African country. And once again, uh, so my dear colleague is still with us. So, interesting development there. Looking at current economic scenario in the Congo, is this fund justified at this rate? Well, from what they've said, reserves mm. are critically low. Mm -hmm. You know, it's critically low is, as the word suggests, critical. So it, it's serious. And obviously, they've got um, balance of trade um, issues, etc. So clearly, they need the, the money. Um, in terms of their current debt um, profile, mm. It's roughly about sort of between six and seven billion dollars. So mm -hmm. this will equate to roughly five percent of the existing um, um, debt portfolio. And um, you know, from a debt revenue standpoint, mm -hmm. we're looking about roughly it's, it's about thirteen, fourteen. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, no, debt to GDP okay. is about thirteen to fourteen. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have the statistics on mm. debt to revenue, but I would have liked to, because debt to GDP is seemingly mm. low. But it's, if we, again, draw parallels to Nigeria, where our debt to GDP percentage is seemingly quite, you mm. know, manageable. Indeed. But unfortunately, when you compare it to revenue, it is mm. not so manageable. So um, I think we would need to look at that um, in the DRC case as well. And it's also understandable you have a new government uh, coming in, so they've re-evaluated re their a need and of course uh, to a large extent hopefully this loan will go a long way if uh, done the right way yes. now the issue of corruption and government reform efforts are they mere pronouncement at this rate it goes hand in hand with what we just uh, said <laughs> Neil, are you trying to make me sound yeah. cynical <laughs> it's, on it's, my it's, tv no, it's an african issue here <laughs> it's an african issue <laughs> <laughs> yes um there's political will mm -hmm. so well there's what politicians say yeah there's what they actually want to do, mm -hmm. and it's what they can actually mm -hmm. do. And if we look at, you know, different countries in Africa, we've seen various shades mm -hmm. of these um, different parameters. Yeah. 
He's been there 11, 12 months. Mm -hmm. One does have to give him the benefit of the doubt. Right. Um, as the expression goes, the proof of the pudding will yeah. be in the eating. And pardon me to use that expression, but mm. it is almost Christmas, so I, <laughs> I, I had to get that Fire one. Fire away. <laughs> so let's see what he does. But it, yeah. he, um, they need to match the stated intent mm. with a clear plan mm -hmm. as to how they're going to address this. Yeah. But then, I guess, IMF are saying, well, we shall be mm. helping you mm -hmm. in that. We will be monitoring <laughs> um, certain yeah. things up to mm. May 2020. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's see how that goes. All right, now, um, DR Congo uh, is rich in mineral deposits. So what will it take to optimize those potentials economically? Oh, no, that, you know that's a million dollar, <laughs> dollar question. And were it, yeah. be, were it to be so easy, yeah. most of Africa would be like most of the yeah. West. A haven. <laughs> um, my view on a lot of these different countries, it all boils down to mindset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mindset not just from the political leaders, mm -hmm. but even from the general society. Yeah. Because the reality is political leaders come from society. They're not dropped mm -hmm. from out of space. True. They are part of us. They are from society. So we have to look at what are the mindsets mm -hmm. that we in our various countries, and mm -hmm. you know, based on different cultural and traditional yeah. nuances, but what are these mindsets that hold us back? that continue to perpetuate this, the high level, higher levels of poverty, yeah. of corruption, and then begin to step by step address these mindsets mm. and change them, Indeed. Um, broadly speaking. All right. All right. Uh, on that note, Soyade Okoli, CEO of Africa Advisory, always a pleasure to have you.